This is a practice run for a presentation I am going to give on Monday. The presentation is called Business Process Management and Case Management, U.S. Healthcare Needs You. It's a beautiful day and so I thought I'd do this preparation outside. If it's any good, I might upload it to YouTube. First, a little bit about me. That's a Venn diagram. I was uh, an, a pre-med accountancy major, the only one I've ever met. I got a master's in industrial engineering, master's in artificial intelligence, and medicine. Uh, obviously, accountancy, cost, industrial engineering, workflow, human factors usability, artificial intelligence, knowledge representation, planning, natural language processing, medicine, that's the domain uh, that I'm here to talk about, and HCBPM, Healthcare Business Process Management. Over the years, as I've tried to combine these four areas, healthcare business process management seems to be uh, the sweet spot. <clears throat> 20 years ago, uh, workflow technology and health uh, infotech were two sleepy villages. It wasn't even called BPM yet. Uh, but now we have thriving metropolises. So down here we have DC and up here we have Baltimore and every day the Baltimore Washington uh, Parkway is just crammed with uh, uh, all kinds of uh, participants and metaphorically speaking uh, I'm here as part of that traffic. I'm uh, a member of the health IT community. Uh, I was chief medical informatics officer for an EHR vendor for over a decade and uh, there is so much opportunity for workflow technology, business process management, adaptive and case management uh, and I'm here to kind of describe uh, what are the problems in healthcare and how can you uh, take advantage of those to sell uh, BPM and case management uh, ideas and software into healthcare. And the next slide. You know, David Letterman's top 10 list? Well, this is the top 10 list of obstacles to workflow technology in healthcare. First of all is workflow complexity. Simple data in complicated workflow is complicated. Complicated data in simple workflow is complicated. Well, healthcare has both complicated data and complicated workflow, so it's hyper complicated. About 15 years ago, healthcare IT really focused more on data, the data structures, representations, formats, standards, and in my opinion, gave short shrift to workflow. And so it hasn't paid much attention to the potential for workflow technology, but that's changing because healthcare and health IT is basically hitting a workflow wall. No cost competition. It used to be the more procedures you did, the more money you got paid. You would be paid 5% on top of whatever it cost you. Of course, now, as we move into value-oriented uh, 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 healthcare, uh, the more efficient you are, the more uh, you will be uh, paid. You get to keep that. Uh, and I'm going to talk about accountable care organizations in a moment. The regulatory environment. Well. Uh, obviously, if there's a lot of red tape, it's hard to uh, do uh, innovative things. But particularly in healthcare, about f a few years ago, a program called Meaningful Use allocated uh, uh, tens of billions of dollars to uh, subsidize electronic health records that me met a list of uh, requirements. Uh, and essentially that pinned those EHRs, <coughs> seeding a lot of care coordination and workflow oriented tasks uh, to third parties. And over the last couple of years, there's been tens of millions of dollars, maybe more, going into care coordination uh, companies that uh, are essentially uh, workflow uh, technology companies. Screens versus workflow. Uh, a pretty screen is easier and more concrete uh, to sell, uh, but workflow is abstract uh, and harder to explain, and it's really the users that uh, understand whether something is usable from a workflow point of view or not. We've got threat to revenue streams. <coughs> uh, a, a majority of the uh, meaningful use dollars have been uh, spent, uh, and until now, it's been very difficult to get uh, folks to uh, take their eye off of the several million dollar check that they might get to the hospital or the tens of thousands of dollars per physician by adopting certified uh, electronic health records. Uh, and, but that's beginning to change. 
And because basically because uh, that tap is starting to run dry. Skeuomorphism. Skeuomorphism is a complicated word that basically says that you take something in the real world, in this case a form, and you re you re-represent it uh, uh, visually uh, on the screen. Uh, so, for example, iPad. Uh, when you change the pages, the pages look like they actually flip, and if you uh, the 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 books are on wooden bookshelves and so forth. And uh, a lot of the early and many of the uh, the current electronic health records basically are form with lots of areas where people can enter that information. And you can see that it can be pretty confusing, uh, whereas in a workflow system you would break this up into pieces and you would present those pieces uh, at the, the natural moment or step in the workflow uh, for uh, reviewing the information or entering information. <coughs> workflow stereotypes. So these are cogs. And there is a, a stereotype uh, from the old days that workflow systems are really about turning the human users into cogs that are being told what to do. Uh, and, and there might have been uh, uh, some uh, credence to that, but of course today uh, workflow management systems are much more flexible and they're really more about uh, taking workload off of the user's shoulders and empowering them with all kinds of uh, uh, decision support to get their work done. Um, to, and, and some of the debate here, I think, uh, relative to business process management and adaptive case management uh, is, is germane. Then there is the not invented here-ism. Healthcare is uh, like a vast country, uh, two, or three tr two or three trillion dollar economy, and uh, doctors have invented programming languages and operating systems and databases. They're not very good, in fact, but they embed a lot of clinical knowledge and workflow. In fact, two of the largest electronic health record systems, uh, Epic and, um, and Vista, are based on technology that was basically invented in healthcare. Uh, invented by healthy IT professionals. So they're not going to be, uh, how you say, quite as good as uh, the same technologies, but invented by, for example, computer scientists. Billing emphases. Uh, electronic health records and a lot of health IT systems are really designed from the output. That is, the bill that's going to be sent to someone, or a report that's going to be submitted to someone to get paid, and then created backward toward the user. So instead of starting with the user and what they do, and helping them do their work, it's all about generating that bill. And that kind of uh, creates systems that are, uh, uh, that just simply don't regard the natural, natural flow of work, and it doesn't really help people get their jobs done. Finally, we have paradigm shift. So I'm sure you've heard of uh, the structure of scientific revolutions by Thomas Kuhn, and you have a set of scientific uh, 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 theories, and they interlock, and it takes a long time, and it's really difficult to move from one set to another. You almost have to, have to move from uh, one generation of scientists to another. Now here's a slide that I often show to the health IT folks, and it's the power of process, or in this case, the power of executable process models. We have executables here, uh, and in the middle, we have these models, models of work. So we have the, the robot engine that is executing these models. We have humans that can understand them, uh, and that is a level of abstraction that is a very valuable one that's missing in health IT because the workflows are implicit in the if-then and case statements uh, of Java and c -sharp. Uh, and if you want to change the workflow, you have to change the code, and that causes all kinds of errors. Um, and by the way, I do understand that these models of work or models of workflow are realized in different ways in different systems uh, within the BPM industry. Um, and that uh, debate, that healthy conversation about what works best is, is highly relevant to solving numerous problems in health IT too. <coughs> Here we have Kurt Lewin's force field analysis. So we have the 10 things that I just listed, workflow complex complexity through paradigm shift. And I won't go through them individually, but except to say that all of them are receding. They are all becoming weaker. And so naturally, then you would see a shift over in this direction. So the tide is turning. And in the animated version of this slide, a big arrow comes in from the side. These slide over, and there's a big question mark. And the question mark is essentially, uh, what are the particular strengths of business process management in case management and, and how do you uh, convey them and how do you essentially build a machine and drive it in the correct direction to, to be like a bulldozer to move that force field from uh, this side to the other side. And that's what the rest of this presentation is going to be about. 
So here we have a slide. Uh, this was at a recent healthcare business intelligence conference. That's the hashtag up there. And it says to be an ACO, and ACO stands for Accountable Care Organization, you need three things, a common EHR, um, a robust data warehouse, and a care coordination platform. I tweeted this and I mentioned that that care coordination platform needs to be based on a workflow technology, a workflow platform. It was retweeted 13 times, uh, so there's that, that really resonated. And if you don't have these three things, and of course that common EHR could be numerous EHRs, but then you have to have interoperability between them. Um, and it's a topic that we will talk about in a slide to come. Okay, I mentioned an accountable care organization. An accountable care organization is, is set up to manage the care and outcomes and cost for a population. Uh, and because it gets to keep, uh, if it's more efficient and it saves money and it, 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 it keeps that as a form of profit that can be reinvested, uh, that switches from a kind of a, a volume model of, of healthcare where doing more makes you more money to possibly doing less makes you more money. And an accountable care organization's IT systems can be broken down into sub areas. And here we have uh, assessments, onboarding, outreach, management care planning and delivery, surveillance and intervention, data analytics and workflow, uh, workflow and management and reporting. And now on the very next slide, you will see a blooming, buzzing confusion because in each of those six areas, there's about six or seven subsystems. I've, I've listed them all right here. And I'm going to do something now that is a couple minutes. Subsystems. And the reason I'm doing this is some of these subsystems, uh, just based on the name, will be, uh, you will instantly recognize. You may already be doing something very similar. Some of these are going to be more clinically oriented, and, that, and that's, this is a form of sensitization, almost like a word poem. So let me read those to you. Uh, membership identification, enrollment, risk and clinical assessment, behavioral screening, cultural screening, outreach and engagement, family and caregiver support, advocacy, beneficiary protections and coordination, clinical outreach, uh, education, member outreach, me reminders, uh, healthcare homes, multidisciplinary care teams, care plan development, uh, efficient uh, evidence-based care guidelines, post-discharge transitions, uh, medication reconciliation, therapy management, referrals and scheduling, uh, service coordinators, navigators, and concierge services, medical management, clinical decision support, remote patient monitoring, telehealth, transportation, data collection, uh, electronic health record integration with health information uh, exchanges, <clears throat> um, medical terminology management, longitudinal patient view, data warehouse and reporting, <clears throat> uh, care team management, home visit management, quality and outcomes management, compliance and adherence reporting, coordination of benefits, financial and reimbursement management. And I uh, apologize for zipping through that, but uh, if, if uh, a couple of those phrases caused uh, some synapses to fire, uh, this will be online, you can actually see the, uh, the, the specifics, uh, then those are areas in which you uh, have an entree to an accountable care organization because you have a product that can be adapted uh, to that, uh, that function. And then in some of the er other clinical areas uh, that I mentioned, I think it's just, I mentioned them as a form of uh, desensitization uh, you've heard it, uh, if, you're, if you're new to healthcare, well, at least you've heard them, heard it once uh, here. So now we have, what are health IT hot button topics? These are things that are useful for you to know about. Uh, right now are interoperability, usability, patient safety, population health management. And I'll talk about each of these. By the way, if you add one more right up the top, which is Workflow 101, uh, I, I took over for uh, uh, a, a health IT blogger last week, uh, whose website is probably the most traffic in health IT. Uh, he, took a, uh, he went on vacation, and I, and I took over for him. I blogged uh, once a day uh, on these uh, 101, which I won't cover here, and then these four topics. And I'm, there, there I'm actually basically selling to and explaining and educating to a healthcare audience, and now I'm going to give you the, the summary of each of those posts. First of all, interoperability. Uh, business process management has a unique 
uh, architecture that, with adapters that can connect uh, legacy systems to perform the enterprise integration. In fact, Will Van der Waals, a well-known uh, BPM researcher in the Netherlands, calls BPM a spider in the web. So it's, it's, it's the glue that can connect up disparate technologies and systems. Right now in healthcare IT, the major focus is on syntactic and semantic interop. So getting the data from one system to another and making sure those codes mean the same thing. So the name of a drug in one system means the same. There's very little consideration given to what the academics call pragmatic interoperability, which, which I call workflow interoperability. And workflow interoperability is, does the message, does the effect of the message, what it actually does, does it match what you intend it to do? And the reason it's called pragmatic is pragmatics is an area of linguistics that has to do with the use of language to achieve uh, goals. And, uh, and, and basically goals are ch achieved together by, by people and by systems conversing with each other, clarifying, double checking assumptions and so forth. And that kind of uh, interaction uh, is really can only be accomplished with workflow technology interacting between uh, organizations uh, of which uh, workflow technology business process management and case management systems uh, are ideal. And there are many problems that happen at the syntactic and semantic layer, uh, and those problems can often be strategically compensated for. Uh, well, wait a minute, this looks like this data is uh, garbage. Let's, let's uh, double check some assumptions. Let's request that it be sent again. That kind of workflow reasoning uh, can only be automated by workflow technology, in, in my opinion. Now we have Workflow usability, big problem. Okay, first of all, in healthcare, there's just a tremendous amount of manual workflow. People clicking, clicking, clicking. Uh, I've, I saw a 200-page manual for an electronic health record. I looked under the workflow section. There were about 100 pages long. I th expected to find process definitions and work plans and workflow engines and instructions on how to, <coughs> to create them and edit them and modify them and improve them. But in fact, what I found was uh, tedious. Here's what you click on, here's what you click on. And if this happens, click over here. If this happens, click over there. There. So it's too much manual workflow. That workflow that is automated isn't customizable. So it's it's basically implicit in the hard-coded uh, third-generation Java, C Sharp, and and MUMPS uh, languages, uh, and it's not transparent. So things are happening, and you can't see that they're happening, and that causes uh, various kinds of patient safety issues. And business process management, and case management system do excellent in these areas just right out of the box. Patient safety and task support. Uh, there have been some incredible headlines of mistakes that have been blamed on the health IT systems. The data uh, that was sent uh, was into incorrect or corrupt. Uh, there was a, a handoff that failed. Someone was working on something, they were interrupted, and then uh, and they forgot about it. Well, obviously, if you can manage, if you have a model of the work, you have a model of these tasks, and some task is pending, you can track that in a workflow system in a way that you cannot do in a workflow oblivious system. Then there's also this idea of integrating clinical decision support, decision support into the workflow. So if uh, two drugs are gonna interact, you can catch that. The problem is, is that these clinical decision support systems generate so many alerts that they get turned off. That's due to alert fatigue. So, uh, but the business process management industry has an excellent uh, 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 experience and, and, and reputation for uh, uh, combining the business rule management systems with the business management systems. Uh, and so they've got a lot of experience in making that context aware and, and seamless. So BPM and case management have unique strengths uh, that are highly relevant to reducing medical error and improving patient safety. Okay, now we get to a very popular phrase, topic, business uh, 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 process management and population health management. Now I looked at many scores of definitions of population health management, and this is my distillation and, and synthesis. Proactive management of clinical and financial risks of a defined patient group to improve clinical outcomes and reduce cost via targeted, coordinated engagement of providers and patients across all care settings. Well, uh, if you think about the very popular technologies, the SMAC technologies, S-M-A-C, Social, Mobile, Analytics, and Cloud, there are obvious places. So social, you've got the patient's analytics because you're improving outcomes and reducing cost across care settings, cloud. But what I want to focus on is this targeted and coordinated. Targeted and coordinated. So targeted means you need to find the patients that are at risk. So the patients that should be enrolled in some chronic disease management program but, but aren't. 
patients for which some number should be measured, but it, it isn't. Or some number that is being measured and it has fallen outside of the uh, normal range. In those cases, you want to trigger automated workflows to push uh, actionable items onto lists of various folks to, uh, to bring that patient into the, uh, the managed program, to, bring, to start measuring what needs to be measured, and to move those abnormal numbers back into the normal range. That is classic complex event processing applied to uh, changes in patient state. That's the targeted. Coordinated, well, once you kick off that workflow, need a way to, to, to monitor it, to make sure things don't fall between the cracks. And that's a classic strength of business process management and case management. So this is a couple of tweets. Uh, I tweet a lot, so that's me. Please follow me, Wareflow. I'm sort of Dr. Wareflow on Twitter, W-A-R-E-F-L-O. And so uh, an expert wrote this uh, uh, article, and in their opinion, business process, or, uh, sorry, population health management is really a combination, an integration of the electronic health record, health information exchanges, uh, various kinds of analytics, care management, uh, revenue cycle management, supply chain cost kind of suit. That's that spider in the web that I talked about earlier. Um, but then at the, in, <laughs> around the same date, uh, this guy who is an expert on population and health management says it boils, it, it boils down to lists, actionable lists. Well, actionable lists, that's at the user interface. And so it's really BPM and case management that can span the interoperability problems of healthcare and the usability problems and to do it in a safe and consistent way that will not overburden the user with, uh, with alerts. And one more wall of words. Uh, and, and, and so in almost every sophisticated population health management architecture I've, I've, I've seen, and I've looked at a lot of web webinars, white papers, uh, drilled down on technical details and so forth, and the architecture, of course, that's the boxes and arrows, the description of the complicated information system that's intended to, uh, to uh, explain or convey it. If you drill down, you will find business process management and case management ideas, and increasingly, actual BPM platforms will be mentioned. Sometimes it's called care, uh, process management, healthcare process management, but usually in the footnotes you see it's a BPM system. Now some of these systems are being are, uh, created in-house, so they're in a sort of reinventing the wheel, and sometimes you actually see embedded versions of uh, third-party folks, and there may be people here in the room whose systems are embedded in some of these um, population health management care coordination systems uh, that I've seen. So, okay, given what I've said, uh, what what can we do from a marketing perspective to accelerate the diffusion of workflow technology, business process management, and adaptive and dynamic case management into healthcare? Well, number one, we need to continue to educate users and buyers so that they can recognize flexible, transparent, improvable workflow. And certainly, uh, I've been doing a lot of it, and you guys, some of you have excellent case studies that I have linked to. Uh, in fact, I have almost 2,000 uh, on, a, on a website out there of example success stories uh, that uh, I use to uh, to show people in healthcare what can be done. We need to leverage those 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 success stories. Uh, one option that I'm seeing increasingly is I'm seeing sort of the peer uh, tool and, and platform provider BPM case management folks uh, c working together with a partner in the healthcare side who has great clinical content, who owns, understands the clinical workflows, but who needs more sophisticated workflow technology to to uh, address what their customers need. I encourage you to join the Health IT Social Media Workflow Conversation. Uh, it actually does exist. Uh, I mentioned uh, those uh, five uh, one post a day. Uh, blogs uh, that I did last week, and uh, on several of them I got uh, a lot of conversation from both people from the BPM side and case management side coming in and looking at healthcare, and also the health IT people saying, well, this is what I think about uh, workflow. And remember that long list of uh, 40 or 50 IT systems involved in accountable care organizations? You get your foot in the door, and then what happens invariably is the people in that organization look under the content, and they say, wait a minute, there's this really flexible workflow engine, case management uh, architecture. Uh, maybe we can use it for this other thing. So they pivot, and I'm sure you've seen that in other industries, and that is a really good way to expand uh, a footprint into healthcare and healthcare IT. 
Okay. One more thing. Uh, there's a lot of debate and, and, and conversation, very healthy, about structured versus unstructured uh, workflows. And, uh, and, and, and I've heard folks say, well, th that we've already automated all the structured stuff, uh, and so that just leaves the unstructured stuff. Well, guess what? In healthcare, healthcare has not even automated structured workflows. So there are excellent opportunities for, for classic BPM uh, platforms. However, healthcare also has even more unstructured workflow than other industries, so there's an excellent opportunity for a variety of case management systems that would also represent aspects of work, such as goals uh, and progress toward them. So healthcare needs both business process management and case management, uh, which um, is, is a good thing. My overall sort of metaphor here is that health IT, health information technology, has hit a workflow wall. And that wall is made of bricks that are that consist of invisible and flexible and effective inefficient workflow and unhappy users. And the window of opportunity, there's a window there for the BPM companies, the case management companies, what the academ academicians call process aware information systems. And although it may be rebranded as healthcare process management or case process management, there is an enormous opportunity. Uh, healthcare in the US is uh, almost a $3 trillion industry. Uh, Will van der Alst, uh, the Netherlands uh, researcher, estimates that uh, 600 or $800 billion of that uh, could be saved uh, with widespread adoption of uh, workflow uh, technology. So here we are. There's my picture of the two metropolises today. We've got DC and we've got Baltimore, and there's just going to be more and more traffic, and that hybrid vigor and those uh, the EHR vendors and the health IT vendors implementing workflow solutions and the, the, the workflow and the case management and the BPM folks uh, pivoting, getting into, let's say, human resources or the payer side and then moving, pivoting ever more uh, closer to the, the clinical point of care. Uh, this is just going to be a very exciting and healthy maelstrom of, of activity. So, I'm, and I'm part of that. Uh, I'm so delighted that I got to come here uh, to talk about this uh, exciting uh, synergy. Uh, the future is so bright, uh, we all need to wear sunglasses. And here's my contact information, uh, Charles Webster, MD. Uh, there's my Gmail account, I'm Wearflow on Twitter. Uh, if you follow me, ping me about this, I will introduce you around, I'll follow you back. I have a bunch of different websites out there. Uh, these are all kind of blogs of various sorts. There's my main uh, chuckwebster.com website. Uh, basically anybody I link to moves up uh, in Google uh, for uh, searches on healthcare, EMR, EHR, workflow, BPM, case management. Uh, I've got my hcbpm.com website, healthcare business process management, EHRworkflow.com, and EHR.biz is my, my uh, custom EHR uh, URL shortener, uh, which also has uh, almost 2,000 links of healthcare, workflow, business process management, case management uh, uh, content. Well, that's my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I guess uh, that's sort of the end of the, my simulated uh, rehearsal, and uh, now I'm uh, going to refer to the fact that I'm standing in front of our, our national capital here in Washington, D.C. It is a gorgeous day. And uh, I'm going to kind of turn around and give a little bit of a panorama. It's about 80, 82 degrees. Lots of tourists. There's a band shell about halfway down. You'll see the, uh, the uh, Washington uh, Monument here in a moment. And you can see down below the, the white glinting off of the, the band shell. Buses, busing in folks. Uh, I love living here in the nation capital. Over here you can see the top of the Smithsonian. And uh, folks are walking up here to the, uh, the pond in front of the capital. I believe that's Grant right there on a horse. I'm from Illinois near Galena where Grant is from. So it's a bit of a connection. Ah, well, thank you. For, if you actually watched this uh, YouTube video, I'm not sure if it's going to be one that I upload. Uh, if you did, I, I'm, I'm delighted, and I hope you'll uh, contact me through uh, any of those blogs that I mentioned or my Twitter account. 
and uh, have a, a glorious uh, rest of the weekend. It's a Saturday right now.